It's the Google Nexus 7 made by ASUS. ASUS knows exactly what they're doing when it comes to Android tablets. They currently make the best Android tablet, the Transformer Prime. This one is just as fast because it has the same Tegra 3 running at 1.2 gigahertz. That's a quad core. It also has a 12 core NVIDIA GPU, and it's the first Android tablet to come with Android 4.1 Jelly Bean pre-installed. And this is not like some half version of Android. This is Android from Google the way it was intended to be, not Amazonified, not you know hacked by your phone companies. It's all Google. The Nexus 7 currently has Wi-Fi, no 3G, no 4G, no spot for a SIM card. Google really didn't want the uh, cell phone providers to have anything to do with this device because, I mean, look at their track record. They load everything up with bloatware. Uh, they don't use real versions of Android or the official versions of Android. They, they mess with things. Google wanted to do it right, and here it is done right. The best way to use this device is to pair it with an Android phone that is rooted so you can tether it together. It's not designed to be a phone. It's not designed to be a camera. It's not designed to be anything other than the best $200 that you can spend this year. That's what it's designed to be. And there it is, an awesome seven inch tablet with a 1280 by 800 IPS display. And it's really, really sharp. You're getting 264 pixels per inch on the iPad. This one is pretty close at 216 pixels per inch. That's the so, new iPad three with the retina. Yes, that's, that, that's the retina. So the pixel density on that one is absurd, but this one is pretty close with 216 pixels per inch and it looks really sharp. So I've got no complaints there. It weighs less than the Kindle Fire. The Kindle Fire is 14.6 ounces. This one is 12 ounces. We really needed to remember to take some flowers over to the grave, the, the graveyard for the Kindle Fire. <laughs> yeah <laughs> because yeah. there's absolutely no reason to get a kindle fire this thing is way more powerful it's like twice as fast as the kindle fire plus it's android 4 the the version of android on kindle fire is like it's like amazon droid <laughs> it's like their own like we want to keep you inside our little closed community and we want you to buy from us this is like you know what you guys can do anything you want we prefer if you use the google store here's all our google stuff there's google stuff everywhere when you first get this it's like we want you to use the google store and the google play and all this google stuff but if you want to you can install kindle you can install nook you can, the apps will all work just fine on this thing the kindle fire feels like a brick compared to that thing yeah it, i mean it's it's only a little bit um, heavier but it's thicker the back of this thing is, is pretty pretty elegant as well. The back is a rubberized plastic uh, that's dimpled. And so it like really feels nice in your hand. But the thing about this device is it's something that you can use with one hand. It's the first tablet. I mean, I've had the Asus Transformer Prime, and that's my favorite tablet currently. However, this one would probably replace it for daily use because it's something you can hold in your hand. You can I mean, if I was in New York, I could run around New York with this in one hand and the other hand punching bad guys, you know, like I do. Or, or holding onto a pole in the train, you know, like... Like you do, like a recess monkey. You've got your Google Nexus in one hand, and you're rescuing an old lady who's <laughs> climbed a tree to save her cat in the other. <laughs> and you're reading how to how to get old lady and cat out of tree. Hold on, lady. Hold on. I'm, I'll be there in a second. <laughs> so that's basically what's happening. It also has something called Project Butter on it. Project Butter going on at my house on Friday. No, Project Butter going on right here all the time. And what that does is it, it's triple buffering uh, plus V-Sync. And it really, really does a good job with the V-Sync and the 60 hertz refresh rate. It keeps everything nice and smooth without, like, the lines going across the screen when things start moving fast. So that's nice, and it makes the entire experience really silky smooth when you're scrolling between your screen. I've got ICS on my phone, mm -hmm. and the user interface on there is much more polished looking, much more beefed up, a lot more functions, a lot more... There's, there's more functionality and more buttons, mm -hmm. but it's not aesthetically cluttered. Sometimes on the phone, I feel like that you have to, you know, click three times to get to what you want. But they really have done a good job with the user interface in the tablet format because it's different and much more efficient and much cleaner. All right, they've laid everything out in, in a way that's intuitive and easy to use. Um, also, there's a few different changes if you're moving from Android 3 to Android 4. Uh, the one thing that I, that I really love is the fact that when you're moving things around on your home screen, like the icons... Before, you would have to move one icon at a time. This one, the icons will intelligently move around. They're just like small. That's just in one small example of an interface tweak. So when you're moving one icon, the other ones will part. The C will part and make room for the other icon. Let's talk about the ins and outs on this. We have micro USB, and we have a combo port that's headphone and microphone. And on the side, we have four mysterious dots, copper dots on the side. Have you seen those dots? Yes, there are mysterious four mysterious dots. copper dots. So that's going to be used for future devices, connectivity. Who knows what could go there? Maybe a, maybe a cover over yeah, the top? Yeah, we did an experiment with a magnet, and it will shut off if a magnet's in the right spot. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. The weak point is the camera. It's only 1.2 megapixel. This thing is not designed to be a camera. 
Let me say that one more time for you guys who, who want to run around with a device this big like, I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to take a picture. No, it's not designed to be a camera. Um, the video, if you want to run around town, here's about what you can do with the video. This is what I would use it for. So here's a little video sample. It's only good for uh, front usage, so you can see me run like this. It'd be great for a chase scene, but uh, since there's no camera on the other side, it's not good for much other than a chase scene. It's not made for videos like this because you can't see what you're shooting. It's going to be shaky, but it is made for videos like this. You don't need to be taking pictures of flowers with this thing, and you do not need to be taking pictures of your dinner. There's plenty of low-res pictures of everyone's dinner on the internet already. Since it's a front-facing camera, you can use it for duck face, though. That was wonderful, wasn't it? I would also mention that, you know, what, on the business side of things, I have to use WebEx and stuff like that a mm -hmm. lot. And Cisco and WebEx, it's just gotten to the point where it's just complete and utter insanity. And I've actually had better luck having business meetings and hangouts on Google+. Plus Because <laughs> all these executives are like, Google+. Plus, So they go and use Google+, and then we do a hangout to have our conference. And that's actually worked better than WebEx, which yeah, is really impressive. Yeah, you just like hang out, yeah. and everyone's chill because it's hangout, and you're like... And it just works. Yeah. Everyone gets on their thing, and you don't have to worry about WebEx. And it really does work it really just, well. It just works. So Google Hangouts for business. Yeah. I don't think they've capitalized on that yet. They just got people like, talking about their, all the commercials, like people talking about M and M's and their dog and and <laughs> country music and I don't know straw hats. I don't know what they talk about on there. It's just <laughs> it's just nonsense is basically what I'm getting at. So you could use that for business as well. The USB uh, port does support USB on the go. That means you can hook up extra devices. This uh, It does support keyboard. It supports a mouse. You can plug that up through USB. If you have an adapter from the micro to a regular USB port. Um, it'll also support USB to Ethernet. There's no official word on that yet, but uh, one of the dudes from Google was using USB to Ethernet plugged into this thing. We saw it. I saw it on, on, the, on the computer. There is no support um, natively for USB storage. So if you've got a hard drive or something like that, it's not going to work natively, but they, they emphasize the word natively. This is an open platform, guys. People can make hacks. People can do things. That's okay. Google does not get angry if you unlock this thing. Google, Google does not get angry if you find a way to mount a hard drive. So it comes in an 8 and a 16 gigabyte flavor, and there is no uh, SD expansion card. No micro SD, no mini uh, SD, nothing like that. I would really, really like to see one in there. Um, again, like you just said, it, it is getting prepped for Google Drive, but... They want you to run everything from the internet. Yeah, everything from the internet. I don't like the fact that, they're, that they really want you to run everything through Google Drive, but it's Android. You can download an app and do it your own way if you want. You can use Dropbox if you want to. There's alternatives, but uh, having everything integrated with Google Drive is convenient, and Google Docs and everything like that, being able to open all those on your device and have access to them at all times, wherever you go, that's also nice. The battery life on this... For normal usage, seven to eight hours. So if you're just chilling, reading books, doing whatever, seven to eight hours. If you're watching movies, it's going to last like maybe half that, maybe three or four hours. So depending on what multimedia you're doing. And next, I want to talk about gaming because we do have a 12 core NVIDIA GPU. In my opinion, it looks about like first gen Xbox 360 games right now. And it's only going to get better. There's like fabric can move, light, you know, light reflecting off different sources. Pretty high polygon counts, 3D worlds. It looks really good. Uh, I'm hoping that these things replace consoles pretty soon. That would be very nice. We just need some support for some uh, controllers because, in my opinion, it's a little bit clunky playing games like first-person shooters and platformers with touch. You can do games like Angry Birds and games like um, World of Goo and stuff like that. Those are okay on the touch, but that's just my opinion. We didn't really talk about apps in this video, but if you need some help finding the best apps for your Nexus 7, go ahead and click on your screen. I made a separate video just detailing my favorite apps for the Nexus 7. To sum it up, the NVIDIA Tegra 3 is super fast. Project Butter is really nice. You've got Google Android 4.1, and since it's from Google, you're always going to have the latest updates of the OS. It's not going to be like the phone companies where you have to wait. Since you have Asus doing the hardware, it's the best hardware out there. There's no more excuse, guys. If you don't have an Android tablet, it's time to get one, and the Nexus 7 is awesome.